Guys, what an incredibly glorious day. Um, we're going to continue looking through uh, John, and I hope you had the opportunity to, um, to get outside and experience some of this wonderful sun. Um, it looks like the government might be stopping us exercising outside and stuff like that, and that's, 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 that's interesting. That's quite pertinent with what we're reading. Let's have a look. There are two passages in John 15 that I really want us to concentrate on, um, and that is verses 1 to 6 and then 18 to 20. So I'm just gonna read those to you. The first one says, Jesus, the true vine. I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I've spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. Now there's both real encouragement and real warning in this passage actually. Um, it's talking about this, this vine. Now, in biblical times, vine means wine. Um, I'm sure people ate the grapes as well, but vine means wine, wine means blood. So there's a real link there, talking about the fact that, um, that Jesus is bringing this, um, this life to the branches. Now, we are the branches. Now, some of us will sit there and think, oh, I am the branch. But actually, who is Jesus talking to? He's not talking to individuals, he's talking to a group. And we need to really just get our mind around the fact that very rarely was Jesus ever talking to individuals. Now yes, individually, I am a branch, but he's talking here in, in verse five, I am the vine and you are the branches. People, his disciples in this case, because he's in the upper room and he's talking to his disciples, you guys are the branches together right the vine this center this this big life giving vine down the center takes water out of the ground goodness out of the ground and feeds it to its branches where the fruit will grow a great big vine with one branch doesn't grow much fruit a great big vine with a healthy stem of branches working together that bears fruit we need to stop reading this individually and start reading this as the people of God. Together, as people, we bear fruit. And if we go out on our own, all right, we're not gonna bear much fruit, we're not gonna do much. And even worse, if we disconnect ourselves from the branch, from, from the branch, we are the branch, if we disconnect ourselves from the center, from the vine, from the contact with the ground, with the water, with the nutrients, This happens. Now above me here is a wonderful fir tree. Um, and within the fir tree, there's all sorts of other trees living off it. I don't even know what this was, but this branch became de detached from the rest of the tree and it is now good for one thing. It's a really good little, little fire starter. So if I gathered up all of these, I could, I could start a great little barbecue um, or a fire. But apart from that, it has no use. Uh, I'm not going to get flowers, I'm not going to get fruit from this anymore. It just happens to be it's fallen down from the trees behind. We've got to stay attached to the root system. That has to be our nutrients. And the vine, the column, that's Jesus. But also we need to grow in number and be attached to the vine. He's talking to the church not just to the individual. Let's move on to um, the end of the chapter, verses 18, 19, and 20. Now this it sounds a bit harsh, it sounds a bit depressing, and kind of I can see that, but let's look at the positive in it. It's entitled The World's Hatred. 18, if the world hates you, be aware that it hated me before it hated you. 
If you belong to the world, the world would love you as its own, because you do not belong to the world. But I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, servants are not greater than their masters. If they persecute me, they will persecute you. If they keep my word, they will keep yours also. Now, I've just been writing um, an essay on John and I really, really wanted to squeeze this point I'm about to say in, um, but I couldn't because I ran out of words and it wasn't really answering the question, I just loved the point. And as I was reading and researching the book of John, um, the, this, this, this word, I had to write this, this essay on glory. And someone said this, there is no glory without suffering in the Bible. All right? Not for humans, for God. God starts with it and God spreads it. The whole creating of, um, of the Garden of Eden, the whole creating of, of, of Earth was a creation of glory. God has it, but for us humans, the glory that we see comes through suffering. The glory on the cross in John, he says it all the time, comes through suffering. The suffering that happened in the Garden of Eden, the, the breaking of sin, God's glory is in the recovering of this. And actually, for us as humans, we've kind of got to expect that things are not ever going to go swimmingly. Right now, we might sit there and go, oh, we're not allowed to exercise anymore, or oh, we can only go shopping once a week. Uh, we can't meet up with our mates. And we can sit there and focus on the suffering, or we can look at the day-to-day, -day and um, you could probably hear Emily and Nicola playing in the background. You know, there's much joy if you can focus on it. I've seen about 20 or 30 butterflies today flying around, just lovely starting to see flowers come up in the garden. The fish are starting to enjoy the pond. There is glory in there if we can look through the suffering. We choose our focus, and I've said this last week as well, we choose our focus. Let's not be people who focus on the negative. Let's not be people who focus on what we can't do. Let's not be the people who focus on the worst in a situation. Let's be the people who focus on the glory in it. If you're struggling to see the glory, it's hard, but it's your choice of focus. Look for those moments of peace. There may be one a day, but I'm really sure there isn't none. We'll chat about it later, and I want you to tell me, where have you seen glory today? Where have you seen something fantastic? amid what's going on. Maybe not because of it, but amid. I can just smell a barbecue someone's cooking down there. Glory. Where are the positives? Where's the good stuff? I challenge you.